Hello everyone, uh, today we have Dr. Axel Stepkin, the global CEO of Tubsud, which is an inspection, certification and testing company. Hello Dr. Stepkin. Tell us a little bit about Tubsud. What does the company stand for? Uh, we see that it's, it's celebrating its 150 years of existence. Since when has it been in India and what do you exactly do in India? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Tufsud was set up or founded uh, in the year 1866, so exactly 150 years ago. That's also the reason why I'm this time here in India. So we will celebrate with some customers and stakeholders of our company uh, this evening. And um, let's say the origin of Tufsud um, uh, was uh, due to, the, um, to, a, to an explosion. There was a big explosion in a beer brewery in one of the major industrial cities in, in uh, Germany and this caused several uh, dead people and of course the whole brewery was, uh, was um, uh, destroyed and uh, then the operators of these steam boilers, one of them exploded in that uh, company and the manufacturers of the steam boilers came together and said, okay, this technology is so unsafe and people are so afraid of this technology, if we don't do something, then probably we will disappear from the market, including our new technology. And then they decided to set up a, an, um, an association to make this technology safe. And this is the major idea of our company, to make technology safe for human beings. Anything that involves technology, you certify it. Uh, the quality of it, the safety of it. Yes, and I would even say we enable innovation by making technology safe. Uh -huh, that's very interesting. Uh, how long have you been in India and what, wh which are the industries, in specifically in India, that you uh, provide the service to? Well, we started in India approximately 20 years ago with uh, the certification of uh, management systems, so ISO 9000, uh, later ISO 14000, meanwhile I would say any ISO standards uh, you could imagine. And we started with six people and um, 20 years ago and today we have close to 2000 people okay. all around uh, India in uh, 31 locations with 19 labs. Ma and the labs are mainly um, active in the field of textile testing, uh, food testing, seafood testing, leather testing, toy testing, testing of electrical uh, equipment and so on. Uh, uh, similarly, give us an example on what you do in the food industry. Recently we had uh, a little bit of a controversy uh, in, on one of the very, very big brands uh, of noodles in India where certification, uh, quality checks um, were not really uh, up to the mark. Then that whole process cost the company and the consumers a lot of heartburn. So, uh, what do you do exactly in food certification? And are there uh, are there examples that you can give us of what you're working with right now in terms of uh, improving the quality of food for uh, for people in India? Yeah, we test food, any kind of food, um, from nuts to um, from peanuts uh, to seafood. Uh, in terms of uh, microbiological and toxic um, things which might be in the, in the food. So are there results uh, vastly varied in India than they would be in, in any other developing country, emerging market, um, a, a Bangladesh or a China or anywhere else? Do you find more instances of uh, food adulteration here? It is difficult to say. That depends on the, on the type of food. I think that would be too, let's say, too diverse now to okay. go into the different details of, of food. What do you do on leather, toys, uh, various other segments? Um, uh, toys are something which obviously, obviously concern a lot of other, a lot of us at a very personal level also. So, what do you do there? So, all our, our work which we do is always around safety, security, and reliability. And uh, that is also what we test in, in toys and especially when, when we know that our children uh, play with these toys, we do not uh, want them to lick at the toy and have them Absolutely. some very dangerous color in their yeah. mouth and see. Yeah. And these kind of things are of course tested. So if we take uh, item A that you have to test uh, and certify the quality of in whichever product category, uh, does it actually travel outside from India to any of your international laboratories for testing or do you do all the testing for Indian products in India? We do all the testing for Indian products in India but what we have is an exchange of uh, experience between our labs. Okay. So we have an international lab network as you can imagine okay. which goes from Brazil 
to Japan and our lab managers come together regularly, compare their technologies and we use best practice and of course always based on international standards and uh, I think with this we improve our quality standard in our group from step to step. Uh, you do a lot of work in the power sector. So uh, tell us what is it that you do uh, in India which where uh, we seem to have surplus power but we are not able to supply it to everyone. So uh, that, is, uh, that is a problem that currently the government is dealing with. But how does certification actually uh, happen? What do you do in the power sector for example? Mm. That is a very important uh, field of our activity here in, in India and I would not even say that there is surplus of, of power. There is, uh, of course there is power, but in several areas we experience brownouts, blackouts. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of the quality of uh, the, the power stations, of the grid and so on. And what we do is to... So you're saying that actually the loss of, tr of, of uh, a transmission is because of quality? Yes. Okay, yes. that's very interesting. It's a, it's a matter of uh, quality. So there's enough generation of power, but not enough transmission of power. No, that is not what I said. It's, it's also not enough uh, uh, generation, generation. Of, okay. of power. And that's also the reason why the government, as you say, has, uh, as, you, as you know, has decided to uh, modernize and renovate uh, power stations. And right. we, are in, we are in several of these, uh, these uh, renovation projects of conventional right. power stations. Right. The other aspect where we are very, in, um, uh, very much in is um, the um, the construction of um, of renewable uh, energy uh, okay. plants. Okay. So, for instance, solar power and uh, and wind power, of okay. course. And when we when we talk about the uh, conventional power stations, what we did is we uh, set up um, a competence center for uh, conventional power plants. So, okay. with experts from India working together with with our international experts, which have the expertise to make power stations more reliable and we have uh, meeten right now several contracts in India where we contribute in the renovation of these uh, coal-fired conventional power plants. So for a layperson, uh, what has your uh, quality assessment and certification actually, uh, how has it helped? Has it actually increased the efficiency of transmission in certain number of uh, power plants that we have in India? Yes, we, what we do is we give recommendations to our power plant operators what has to be done to improve the efficiency and the reliability of the power stations. There, are, there could be that uh, we do an assessment of the turbine and recommend to do something at the turbine, could mean the steam boiler, could mean, uh, could mean um, anything else. And the, the latest project we have, I think, is uh, very important for the future development of this kind of uh, activities. Uh, we are in one power plant in India where we equip the power plants with, with sensors. Meanwhile, we have uh, equipped it with more than 500 sensors, which gives us and the operator the ability to predict faults which might come up in, okay. in the future so that they can upfront do maintenance, so the so-called predictive maintenance, okay. before the failure um, exists. And that, of course, will increase the reliability and the availability of this power plant dramatically. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of contribution you seem to be making to uh, digital India, skill India and make in India. Uh, take us through what is the contribution that a certification company makes in these areas? I think it starts with the, with the initiative of the government of this make in India. Uh, the, the target is to bring people into jobs, into industrial jobs. So in many developed countries the, 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 the level of, uh, let's say, industrial uh, workplaces compared to workplaces in the service industry is higher uh, as here in India, in India and that's the reason why there is this initiative. And the question is how to get more industrial investments in the uh, country and how make these in industries more efficient and more productive. And then the second aspect as you said the digital India comes into, into the game. Yep. Um, I think there is a very important relation so the the, the modern industries today depend heavily on being digital. Absolutely. Well, the industry 4.0, as we call that in, in Germany, is in many cases the key success factor to make these companies uh, productive. Okay. And here, it's 
it's again the question of the safety of these systems, the security of these systems, cyber security, mm -hmm. and reliability, inter in interoperability of the different subsystems within a, in a, in a, in a, um, a factory. And what we do as a, as a certification company and testing company, we support our customers in having their systems safe, secure, and reliable. Oh, so you do things like cyber security also for yes, companies? Yes, oh, we okay. have uh, okay. several people doing penetration tests. We, uh, we have a huge department or several huge departments certify um, the, the systems according to, uh, to for instance, ISO 27000. So it's a cyber security uh, standard. And, uh, and we, of course, test the interoperability of uh, different parts of the system. So how far do you see Digital India specifically actually progressing? Uh, your experience of what's really happening and how India is transforming, if at all, as far as the digitalization of the economy is concerned. The Prime Minister is very uh, keen on this, but uh, we don't get a feedback very often that it's succeeding as much as he would probably want it to. Mm -hmm. So what's your impression, what's really happening with your clients in India? Do you see Digital India actually making a push? I think so, because um, I think the, the problem in India is the same as everywhere in the world, that, um, that of course there is an investment necessary to, to make such a new technology really uh, come into, into the game. And uh, with the same discussion in, in Germany, uh, investments are quite high. And today, because it's so new, yeah. not everybody knows exactly are, yeah. when the return will come right. and what kind of return will come. So right. it's here, the, it's a very similar situation. Um, but I think the basis here in India is not bad because, as we know, India has many, many very well-trained IT people, which can, can help a, a lot in this. And the, the education, the understanding of this technology in many parts of the country is very good, so I see a very good um, chance that India will be very successful here. And uh, on Skill India, do you sort of uh, help people get skilled uh, through your, your work in India? Does it mean you're going to expand in India, uh, increase manpower? What does this really mean as far as Tufsud is concerned? No. The training uh, business and especially the business of assessing people after training is one of our major uh, businesses here in, in India because all the in is initiatives like, like Make in India, Digital India only can be successful as uh, when we have trained people. Right. So many people have to be trained every day and we m have meanwhile done in the last two years 90,000 uh, assessments of, of young people who went through tra training uh, initiatives and so you do the training and no. then you do the post-training assessment? No, no, we, we, uh, that, that are two different uh, business models. We do, of okay. course, training okay. for several of, let's say, our, um, uh, several of our services. But on the other hand, we also do assessment of uh, the training of others ah, yeah, so that okay. we have an independent assessment. Okay. That's our role okay. in this, this game. But we also do own training. By the way, that also we did 150 years ago. Uh -huh. the, the steam boilers did not only explode because the material uh, were, were of bad quality. One of the reasons why they exploded people was the people trained. were not trained. They right. just didn't know how to operate the steam boilers. Right, right. Well, uh, I'm sure you're preventing uh, many such explosions that would have <laughs> otherwise happened. Uh, so good luck with your work, and I'm sure you. uh, you'll have a you'll have a more engaging presence in India as years roll by. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank uh, you very much.